Be good. Be good. All right, got some updates for you guys. I've been back here in Florida for around two weeks since my Los Angeles and Dallas, Texas trip. I just recently moved to a new apartment complex as well. I was in my old apartment complex for around two years and I was ready for a change. I was ready to go somewhere else. So I just moved about a week and a half ago and so far so good, I love it. The view is amazing looking over Fort Lauderdale. The dogs love it as well. It's nice, clean, fresh. As for the poker, I have never experienced this before. I've never experienced this long of a downswing and this amount of money to be lost. So like I've said before, I had a great year from January 2023 into November of 2023. I had the best year of my entire life with poker. I had some of the biggest upswings, the biggest months ever. It was insane. But then in December, in January, and in February, I just lost every single month, culminating in a $60,000 downswing. $60,000 downswing just about a week and a half ago. It was rough. I mean, it is rough. It's crazy to lose that kind of money playing poker. I honestly, it doesn't even really make sense. But yeah, $60,000 downswing at the lowest part. However, since I've been back here in Florida, I have gone on a little bit of an upswing. I'm up around $23,000 since about a week and a half ago. So I lost $60,000 in three months, and then we've won back $23,000 so far. So on the right track, we're getting back there. Still have a long, long way to go. As for today's session, we're heading to Harris, Pompano Beach to play a 1025 game. Should be great action. Let's go. With some inspiration from a couple other poker content creators, I'm going to do a bankroll rebuild challenge. We lost $60,000 in about three and a half months. I've won back $23,000 of that $60,000. That leaves us in the hole $37,000 to go. I'll keep you guys updated every single session until we get back to even, hopefully. All right, let's get into the poker hands. I raise ace, 10 of spades to $75. The game is 10-25. There's a call from the button and a call from the small blind going three ways to an ace high board. The small blind leads out now for 200. I contemplate raising, but I decide to just call. Turn cards a 10 of clubs, now giving me top two pair. However, the club flush draw gets there. My opponent continues now for a $600 bet. Not really liking this because I'm losing to all flushes. However, I do have some outs against those flushes. If I make a full house, I'm ahead of all other aces. Not sure if he would play a set like that. So I make the call for 600 and the river card is a fourth club. Not happy with this run out. He then checks. I check back. He says, we're good. I show ace 10 and we take down the first pot. Yeah, right. This next one is a big one. Ace five of clubs under the gun. I raise a 75. I get three callers. Four ways to king 10 eight. Two clubs flopping the nut flush draw. A very big hand for me. Out of position though, I decide to check. It checks all the way here to the hijack who puts out a $200 bet. Big blind calls 200 and I feel like with a nut flush draw on this board, I can apply some pressure to some 10x hands, weaker king x hands get value from weaker flush draws, so I bump it up. I check raise here, semi-bluffing to $700. Hijack player who bets to flop pretty quickly calls in the small blind folds. We're now heads up, a big pot ensuing here to the turn of six of diamonds. My opponent looks like he's got around $2,000 left. I'm gonna go for it here, a big semi-bluff. I announce all in. Send me home. I just have a flush draw. Me too. I get called very quickly, which is not great, but I feel like I get some good news. When I announce I have a flush draw, my opponent says he has the same. Maybe he's drawing dead here, except he's got king eight of clubs. Top pair in flush draw. We are in rough shape. We're in need of a club, an ace. We always run out the board two times, so we have two times to get there. Let's see if we can... Nope, not this time. Bricks on both rivers, and we lose a massive 
$6,000 pod right off the bat. Definitely not in love with the way I play this hand. I feel like I could have played it the passive route and just check called or bet the flop myself. I played it very aggressive and I missed everything. I mean, results oriented, I could have hit a club or an ace and scooped this entire pod. I feel like in this game where players are more likely to call than fold, I should just wait for value instead of trying to bluff. Next up, there's a couple calls for $25. I bump it big, $200 with pocket tens. There's two calls for $200 before the hijack player who overlimbed now goes all in for $675. This reopens up the action, so I go all in for my stack, trying to isolate him. Everybody else ends up folding. We are all in here against pocket threes, running out this board two times, which we hold and get a little bit back from that semi-bluff punt with ace five of clubs. Another hand I'm not too happy with here, pocket tens again, early position raises to 100, hijack calls, cutoff calls, I just call in a small blind four ways to queen, nine, three, rainbow. I check, initial raiser checks, hijack player checks, and cutoff player now bets $300. This is the same player who earlier bet out on an ace high board when I had ace 10, and then continued to bet $600 with a bluff. So given the fact that he is capable of bluffing, I don't want to get rid of my pair just yet. So I make the call for 300. Initial Razor calls 300 and the hijack player calls $300 as well. Turn cards another queen, which I feel like is a great card. Reduces the likelihood that my opponents can have a queen. I check. Other players check to the cutoff again, who now bets $1,000. And now I think I get a little bit frustrated and make the call. This is just a pretty standard fold. We're so multi-way, it's very easily one of these guys could have a queen. Unfortunately, the hijack player calls $1,000 as well, so this pot is getting huge. River card is the five of hearts. I don't improve. Backdoor flush gets there. I check. Hijack player checks. Cutoff player checks. The cutoff says he has nothing. Hijack player, though, has queen six of diamonds for trips, and we lose another pot, and now I'm down a lot of money. You guys haven't seen me raising and losing a lot of hands. I have to add on to my stack for $4,000, but now I'm down about 5k in this game. Down $5,000, but this game is good. I'm not going to quit. I have a bunch of rapid fire hand histories for you guys up next. Jax, there's a $50 straddle, two calls. I bump it to $350 and get one call. Out of position to an 833 board. I bet big $500. My opponent folds. We win back around $400 in this hand. There's a $50 button straddle. I'm first to act with king-queen offsuit. I raise to $200 and get a bunch of callers, going five ways to a jack-8-5 board. I check. I've got nothing here, and the action checks all the way around. Turn card does give me top pair. It's a queen, but it could improve people to two pairs, even a straight. I check again, and it checks now over to the hijack who bets big, $650. I make the call here with my top pair, but I'm not really too thrilled. River card's a five. I feel like this is a great card. I check to him, and he waves the white flag, checks back, says he has ace high, and we win here with our queen. Another $1,500 going our way. What is really hard to portray on these vlogs is all the downtime in between these interesting hands. There's a ton of hands that I play where either I call a raise, I raise myself, I bet the flop and lose. And yes, I did win a couple small to medium sized pots, but I've also lost a lot of pots as well. I'm still down around 5K on the day, but I pick up a premium now. Ace King of Spades in the big blind. There's a raise to $100, a call for $100, I bump it big, out of position, I make it $600 to go. Initial Razor doesn't think for too long and makes a call for $600. And the other player folds. We're heads up here. Ace, King of Spades. Give us an Ace, a King. Some Spades one time. Not this time. Queen, Eight, Four, Two Hearts. I do feel like C-betting here could be good. I can get him to fold out hands like Ace, Jack, or other hands with equity. Even hands like Pocket Nines, Tens, or Jacks. Might be in a tough spot if I bet. So I'm going to see bet here. I make it $550 to go. And then my opponent announces a raise to $1,800. Well, there's not much I can do here now. He only has about $2,000 left. Don't think he's ever folding. I think an all-in would be a punt. I do use my button, which you can use one time per session to see your opponent's cards after you fold. And he shows pocket tens. Wow, what a interesting raise on the flop there i mean why can't they do that when i've got aces or kings 
I guess he read the situation for me having ace-king. He raised for value. He takes down the pot, and we lose another thousand dollars. Well, I was all excited heading to this game knowing that I clawed my way out of a $60,000 downswing with a $23,000 upswing, but now I'm down 6000 on this session. And the other thing is, this game is amazing. There's so much action, so much money on the table, so many big pots, and I just can't win anything. I cannot hit anything. My bluffs aren't working. I'm not hitting any boards. This is extremely frustrating, but like I said before... Not going to quit. I'm going to play all the way until this game breaks and just pray I can get some of my money back. There's a raise to 50, two calls, out of position, king-queen offsuit. I'm tilted. I want to play a big pot. I re-raise here to 375. I just get one caller, middle position player. So I'm going heads up to another awful flop. 7, 4, 5, 2 spades. Not going to be putting any money in here. So I check and luckily my opponent checks back. That's good. Turn card's a queen, now giving me top pair. My opponent's got around $2,000 left in his stack, and now I decide to bet $550. He makes a very quick call, and the river card is the jack of spades. Flush gets there, some two pairs get there. I don't think there's really any merit to betting here. I feel like it's better to check call, allow him to bluff, so I check over to him. He quickly goes all in for around $1,500. He could have a flush, he could have two pair, but I'm in that mood where I'm just never folding top pair, so I make the call. All in. Is it all in? All in? You win. You win. Thanks. Welcome. It's always nice when you make a hero call and your opponent says you're good, and in fact, king-queen is good to take down over a $4,000 pot. If I would have played this hand earlier on in the session when I wasn't tilted or down money, I maybe would have made the hero fold, given the fact that there is so many hands that beat me. Flushes, two pairs, and sets, ace-queen, but I'm in that screw-it-you-gotta-show-me-the-winner kind of mood, and I made a light call. It turned out to help us here get out of the hole a little bit we were down six thousand now we're down about thirty eight hundred dollars working our way back it's around 1 a.m there's two more hours of this game left will we get back to even or will we lose even more money we're playing seven handed now it's around 1 15 a.m i raise queen 10 offsuit get a couple callers flop trips and win a medium sized pot and this catapults us all the way up to a ten thousand dollar stack a pretty big stack for a 10 25 game but i'm in the game for twelve thousand dollars we had about a six thousand dollar stack just a few hours ago we're trending in the right direction we have three more big hands to close out the night and one of three to close out the night starts off great. King of spades, king of hearts, pocket kings, cowboys are raised to $100 and almost get too much action here. Five callers, six ways with pocket kings is an idea with a big overpair. Pretty easily to get cracked, but on a 5-5-4 five, five, two diamond board, I feel pretty confident here. I mean, it is hard to flop trips. I'm losing a pocket fours, but I'm beating all overpairs. Don't expect anyone to have aces. So I bet $300 here. I get one caller from the middle position player and the turn card's a three. I'm gonna continue to bet. I don't have a diamond in my hand, can get called by flush draws. All over pairs here, like eights, nines, and tens. Make it $575 to go. My opponent thinks for a little bit of time and calls. River card double pairs the board with another three. It is a close spot whether we want to continue to go for value here against those eights, nines, or tens, or check to potentially induce a bluff. I feel like against this player, checking is fine, so that's what I do. He takes a swig of his drink, puts it back down, and announces a $1,000 bet. Never folding kings on this board against this player, so I call and get shown ace five offsuit. For trips on the flop, full house on the river. We went one step forward, two steps back, losing around $2,500 in this hand. The last two hands of this vlog will be up against the same player. The guy who tried to bluff me when I had king queen when the jack of spades hit on the river. He went all in. I called and won that pot. I've got another beautiful hand, jack 10 of diamonds. There's a $50 straddle. I raised to 300 and he makes a call here in position. We're going heads up here out of position to jack four five. I bet 350 and he calls. Turn cards an eight. I pot control and check for deception as well. And he checks back. River cards another eight. I think this is a spot that I can easily go for value 
against a five, a four, an ace high hand, pocket sixes, pocket sevens, pocket nines. So I bet around the size of the pot, $1,200 to go with my top pair. After a minute of thinking, my opponent calls Jack 10 is good. Another big pot going in my direction. I'm winning some, I'm losing some, I'm winning some, I'm losing some. A roller coaster yo yo session. Honestly, it's pretty tough to take. I was down money, almost back to even, down money again, and now I'm within $2,000 of getting back to even on the day, which I will say is a win leading in to the last hand of the night. Playing four-handed now, button straddles to 50. I raise to 200 in the small blind. I get a call from the cutoff and a call from the button. Three ways to ace, queen, five, two spades. Top two pair. Nice. I bet $200. Only the hijack player makes the call. Button player makes the fold. Heads up now to the jack on the turn. I bet $500 and my opponent calls again. Six of spades on the river. Not my favorite card. Front door flush does get there. I do have the ace of spades, which I am happy with. I feel like my hand wants to continue to go for value. Top two pairs, very good. Can get called by weaker aces, weaker two pairs. So I decide to bet out $1,000. One pumpkin colored chip and he snap calls me. Oh no, does he have a flush? No, he doesn't. I show ace queen. He taps the table and mucks his cards, and just like that, we win a big pot right at the end of the night. Buzzer beater here. Right after this, the table ends up breaking, and I cash out for a $12,030 stack. That's a profit of $30 on the night. At one point, I was down $6,000. I clawed all the way back to even and profiting 30 bucks. We have a $37,000 deficit, which now gets changed to $36,970 to go. It's 3.30 a.m. I've been playing for nine hours. I'm exhausted. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you.